What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network with a reading of the Optech newsletter today, number 18th, on October 28th, 2018. This week's newsletter contains a warning about communication with Bitcoin nodes using RPC over unencrypted connections, links to two new papers about creating fast, multi-party ECDSA keys, and signatures that could reduce transaction fees for multi-sig users, and lists some notable mergers from popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Close open RPC ports on nodes. About 13% of Bitcoin nodes appear to have their RPC ports open on unencrypted public connections, putting users of those nodes at risk. See the full news item below for additional details about the risk and recommended solutions. News. Over 1,100 listening nodes have open RPC ports. It was recently mentioned in the Bitcoin Core Dev IRC chat room that many Bitcoin nodes on the network had their RPC port open. Optech investigated and found out that about 1,100 of the 8,400 listening nodes with an IPv4 address did indeed have port 8332 open, and that is 13.2%. This may indicate that many node operators are unaware that RPC communication over the internet is completely insecure by default and exposes your node to multiple attacks that could cause you money even if you disable the wallet on your node. RPC communication is not encrypted, so any eavesdropper observing even a single request to your server can steal your authentication credentials and use them to run commands that empty your wallet if you have one. Trick your node into using a fork of the blockchain with almost no proof-of-work security, overwrite arbitrary files in your file system, or do other damage. Even if you never connect to your node over the internet, having an open RPC port carries a risk that an attacker will guess your login credential. By default, nodes do not accept connections to RPC from any other computer you have to enable a configuration option to allow RPC connections. To determine whether you've enabled this feature, check your Bitcoin configuration file and start up parameters for the RPC allow IP parameter. If this option is present, you should remove it and restart your node unless you have a good reason to believe all RPC connections to your node are encrypted or are exclusive to a trusted private network. If you want to test your node remotely for an open RPC port, you can run the following nmap command after replacing address with the IP address of your node. If the result in the state field is open, you should follow the instruction above to remove the RPC allow IP parameter. If the result is either closed or filtered, your node is safe unless you've set a custom RPC port or otherwise have enabled a customized configuration. A pull request has been opened to Bitcoin Core to make it harder for users to configure their node this way and to print additional warnings about enabling such behavior. Two papers published on fast multi-party elliptical curve digital signature algorithms. In multi-party ECDSA, two or more parties can cooperatively but trustlessly create a single public key that requires the parties also cooperate to create a single valid signature for that public key. If the parties agree before creating the pub key, they may also make it possible for fewer than all of them to sign. For example, two out of three of them must cooperate to sign. This can be much more efficient than Bitcoin's current multi-sig, which requires placing 8K signatures and N public keys into transactions for K out of M and security, whereas multi-party ECDSA would require 
always require only one signature and one public key for any K or, K or N. The techniques underlying multi-party ECDSA may also be used with scriptless script as described in newsletter number 16. Best of all, these advantages are available immediately to anyone who implements them because the Bitcoin protocol current support of ECDSA means it also supports pure ECDSA multi-party schemes as well. No changes are required to the consensus rule, the peer-to-peer -peer protocol, address format, or other shared resources. All you need are two or more wallets that implement multi-party ECDSA key generation and signing. This can make the scheme appealing to existing services that gain from the additional security of Bitcoin's multisig, but lose from having to pay additional transaction fees for the extra public key and signatures. It will likely take time for experts to review these papers, evaluate their security pro properties, and consider implementing them. And some experts are already busy working on implementing a consensus change proposal to enable a Schnorr signature scheme that can simplify generation of multi-party public keys and signatures and also provide multiple other benefits. Here are links to the two papers, the Fast Multi-Party Threshold ECDSA with Fast Trustless Setup by Rosario Gennaro and Stephen Goldfeather, and Fast Secure Multi-Party ECDSA with, uh, with Practical Distributed Key Generation and Applications to Cryptocurrency Custody by Yuhua Linden and Ariel Noff and Samuel Renelucci. Notable merges. Notable code changes this week in Bitcoin Core, L&D, C Lightning, and Lipsec P256K1. A Bitcoin Core merge for use with Bitcoin's Core multi-wallet mode, a new list wallet directory RPC can list all available wallets in the wallet directory. Bitcoin Core merge fixes a likely regression in 0.17.0 for watch-only wallets that require users to import their public keys for multi-sig scripts rather than just importing the script. In order for Bitcoin Core to attempt spending the script using RPCs such as fund raw transactions with the include watching flag, this pull request has been tagged for backport to 0.17.1 whenever work on that should start. A workaround for version 0.17.0 users is described in Bitcoin Core pull request. A LND merge with new functions for creating sweep transactions have been added replacing functions from the UTXO nursery that is dedicated to incubating time-locked outputs. These new functions accept a list of outputs, generate a transaction for them with an appropriate fee that pays back into the same wallet and not a reused address, and signs the transaction. The sweep transaction sets a end lock time to the current blockchain height, implementing the same anti-fee sniping techniques adopted by other wallets such as Bitcoin Core and Green Address, helping to discourage chain reorganization and allowing L&D sweep transactions to blend in with those other wallet transactions. Another L&D merger to ensure that an attacker who, chose, who chooses to lock his funds for a very long period of time of up to 10,000 years can't cause your node to lock the same amount of your funds for the same length of time. With this patch, your node will reject requests from an attacker who to lock the, his funds and your funds for a period of more than 5,000 blocks or about five weeks. A C Lightning merge provides a new list forward RPC that lists forwarded payments payments made in payment channels passing through your node, including providing information about the amount of fees you've earned from being part in the forwarding path. Additionally, the Get Stats RPC now returns a new field, M Satoshi's Fees Collected, containing the total amount of fees you've earned. 
and Emerge in Lipsec P256K1 allows crawlers for the ECDH functions to use a custom hash function. The Bitcoin consensus protocol does not use ECDH, but it is used elsewhere with the same curve parameters as Bitcoin in schemes described in BIP 47, 75, and 151, old drafts, and lightning bolts 4 and 8, and various elsewhere such as BitMessage and the Elements project sidechains using confidential transactions and assets, and some Ethereum smart contracts. Some of these schemes can use the default hash function libsex 256 k one uses. So this merge pull request allows passing a pointer to a custom hash function that will be used instead of the default and which permits passing arbitrary data to that function. Peers, please subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter, a wealth of resources provided by really, really kind and loving experts of the Bitcoin open source community. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.